Hi. Now there's a myth regarding oscilloscopes that simply will not go away. And that is that digital scopes, be they ancient, like this uh, Tektronix TDS-210, sort of a bit more modern, like this Rigol uh, 1000 E-Series, or something like this, you know, really kick-ass high-end uh, Tektronix 3000 series just released. And the myth is that your old traditional analog oscilloscopes like this Tektronix 2225 or any analog oscilloscope is, in quote marks, lower noise than a digital scope. And well, that's not actually true. And I want to explain it to you today. So let's start off by taking a look at this uh, Tektronix 2225. Nice analog oscilloscope, 50 megahertz bandwidth, fairly typical analog scope. And look at that trace. Look at it. It's just beautiful. Look how fine that is. I've got no input connected to these scopes or any of these scopes as we'll see and they're all going to be by the way set to the same volts per division, one volt per division in this case and one millisecond time base just so that we're consistent across all scopes but look at that. You might think how beautiful is that? There's no noise on that whatsoever. These analog scopes are so massively low they practically don't have any noise at all. They're brilliant. And then you go to something like this uh, ancient TDS-220, 100 megahertz bandwidth analog scope, one of the first real-time bandwidth scopes on the market. And, well, take a look at the waveform. It's, you know, it's a bit fuzzy. Look at the noise on there. Eh, you've, you know, anyone would say that is noisier than that, tech, than that analog Tektronix 2225 we saw before. And then we've got this six, seven-year-old Rigol DS1052E. It's still sold. It's almost obsolete, but once again, it's a, it, even though it's a 50 megahertz bandwidth, the firmware's been hacked, it is actually a 100 megahertz bandwidth front end. And this is a pretty, um, you know, a, a good example of a modern, low-cost, you know, bottom-of-the-range DSO. And, well, look at the waveform. Once again, all these time bases are identical. The volts per division are all identical. And... Look, and we get in, see, see those little occasional blips in there? Look at that, that's, you know, a good four pixels high or something. All that noise, you would think, well, that one's actually slightly worse than the Tektronix TDS-220. And then we'll have a look at this brand spanking new Tektronix 3000 series scope. Very expensive scope, you know, over $10,000 worth, just released. It's a quality Tektronix brand, you'd expect this to have, you know, be a really well designed scope. And well, once again, same time base and same voltage setting, no input. Look at the waveform. Ugh, it's all over the shop, right? That is the worst of these four scopes. It looks like they got progressively worse, or digital scopes have got progressively worse as time has gone on. Well, is that fact or fiction? So clearly I know what you're thinking. Dave, you're talking rubbish. I can see it with my own eyes. This one, analog scope, traditional analog scope, is definitely the lowest noise scope. This one is the uh, next best, the uh, ancient digital, then the slightly more modern digital is probably better again. And this latest modern one is just absolutely hopeless. I can see it with my own eyes. Well, I'm here to tell you that your eyes aren't deceiving you. Yes, this is better, but you're not seeing the whole picture. You're not thinking fourth dimensionally. Now, the thing you must remember with a traditional analog scope is obviously it has no storage capability and the brightness of the image on the screen is going to be determined by how long the trace spends in that position. So if we had just had a little tiny runt pulse that went boom up there like that and it happened one in a million times, you're never going to see it on an analog scope because in each sweep, assuming that the trigger actually, uh, uh, you know, it was actually able to be displayed, it'd only be displayed one in those million sweeps or whatever. So you wouldn't see it. It wouldn't be there long enough to produce a bright image on the screen like we're seeing with that trace there. And yes, I can make that trace fatter by turning up the brightness. Now, that is like a blooming effect on the scope, but it's not just that. It's also displaying more information 
when you make it brighter and I've shown that in my previous video as I mentioned which I'll link in down below how your analog oscilloscope can be hiding the true signal so in this respect analog scopes aren't nearly as good as digital scopes for capturing the actual hidden data in there the hidden signal in there so somewhat confusing but a lot of people make that mistake thinking analog scopes display the signal better not necessarily so watch the other video and you'll find out why so the bottom line is any noise on the analog amplifier input down here or on the signal that you're feeding in any noise which is uncorrelated to your sweep speed or your trigger i.e. it's just randomly appears it's not synchronized with the sweep then it's going to appear quite dim or non-existent because it's not going to show up all the time and that is why an analog scope will always show this beautiful clean signal like that effectively what it's doing is averaging your signal by way of brightness but let's take a look at the first example of our digital scope here ancient Tektronix TDS220 but as you should know a digital scope actually samples the signal then displays it so any noise or anything else in there is going to get captured in that data acquisition and displayed now in this case this signal looks relatively clean you can see little noise artifacts on there you can see it right but it's not that bad you would think that's not too bad at all especially compared to the Rigol one above it but here's the first fact you need to know about digital scopes the amount of information you're seeing displayed on that screen there is going to be determined by the sample memory depth and with this ancient scope here the 200 uh, series TDS it's only got 2.5k of sample memory practically bugger all and that is why we're getting a nice clean signal there so that's fact number one and I can demonstrate that on this Rigol here. Now, you can see that it looks a little bit worse than the Tektronix one, okay? 100 megahertz bandwidth, same time base, same voltage, no input, all those spikes, but this uh, Rigol DS1052E has one meg of sample memory. So, for any given time base, in this case, one millisecond uh, per division, then it can capture much more high frequency noise and actually display it on the screen. And that's exactly what it's doing. And I'll show you that if we go into the acquire menu here, if I, it's on long memory at the moment, so it's got that one uh, meg points. It's using that one, one meg points of memory, but watch what happens to this signal. If I uh, drop it down to short memory, I think it's only a couple of K or it might be 10K on this scope, but we'll see a difference. It's going to clean it up, not by a huge amount, but it will. You'll be able to see it. Watch. See? It dropped. Oop! <laughs> the oscilloscope's memory depth is 8K or 16K in normal mode, and with 512 or 1 meg in long memory mode. There you go, it answered that for us. So you can see that difference there. It's going, f it's dropping at least a whole line of pixels there. It's thinner by at least one pixel or one least significant bit if it's displaying 256, for example. That's because in log memory mode, it is capturing more of that high frequency bandwidth that high frequency noise and it's super, and it's putting it on the screen so it's showing you more of a true representation of the signal than the analog scope is because this data uh, this uh, that high frequency data in long memory mode wouldn't be displayed on an analog scope because it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be visible it wouldn't be on the screen long enough to light up those phosphors and that's why an analog scope appears to have less noise but it actually doesn't and fact number two that you should know about digital scopes or any scope, even analog ones. The higher the bandwidth, the greater the inherent noise of the amplifier and other front end circuitry. So in this case, we can see this by turning our bandwidth limit off and on. At the moment, this Rigol scope is 100 megahertz bandwidth, but I, if I turn this bandwidth limit on it'll drop down to 20 megahertz bandwidth and we should see this noise drop a little bit more you won't see it a huge amount on this we'll be able to see it on our high-end tectronics in a second but I'll show you there we go there's slightly less 
you can see just on the bottom of the waveform there, there's little pixel chunks taken out, so it's slightly less noise. Look at that. <laughs> Fact number two. Now, on our brand new Tektronix MDO 3000, we'll be able to see both of these things much better than we could on the previous one. Now, as before, exactly the same time base, exactly the same voltage input, and the noise looks pretty horrible. Look at that. But, if I call up channel 1 here, look, the bandwidth is full. And the bandwidth of this scope is 1 gigahertz. Got a massive bandwidth. So the first thing we can do is change this, 250 megahertz. We'll see the noise maybe drop by a smidge and it might be hard, but we'll give it a go. Here we go, 250, yep, slightly. You can see that grow just a little bit there and 250. We drop it down to 20, same as we did on the Rigol. It's less noise again, look at that. So I'll put that back to its full 1 gigahertz bandwidth. We'll go to the acquire menu and we'll now muck around with the record length. Look. It's 10K at the moment, okay? So not a huge amount, okay? Now, if we vary this, let's drop it down to 1,000, just like we had on that ancient Tektronix TDS 200 series. Watch the noise on the waveform. Bingo, look at that. It's dropped significantly. And once again, if we uh, drop the bandwidth down to 20 megahertz, look at that. Our line is exactly, almost exactly identical to what we were getting on the ancient TDS-220 because our uh, those two rules, the bandwidth makes a difference and also the amount of the sample rate showing that high frequency content. But we've dropped both of those down and bingo, our noise has magically vanished. Look at that. I'll turn it back. Now watch this. So we're back to our one gig bandwidth. So we're now on 10K. Let's go up to 100K. Look at that. The line gets thicker. One meg. Line gets thicker again. 5 meg, oh, you probably, yeah, you won't see, might not see much difference there, but 10 meg, that is as thick as it's going to get. Look at that. We're on 1 volt per division with no input whatsoever and a 1 gigahertz bandwidth. You would think this is the worst scope in history, but it's not. It's actually showing you real data. So there you go. There's nothing inherently wrong with digital scopes. You've just got to understand those two reasons why they can show uh, more noise in quote marks is not really noise, it's actually real data that's there, which is ordinarily being hidden on an analog scope because that analog scope just averages out over its screen. So, in that respect, digital can actually be better because you can easily capture that high frequency data that's really there. Now, if we go into the acquire menu again, I can demonstrate that. Let's go into high res mode, which puts on boxcar averaging so it's averaging out some of that high frequency content boom look at that and then if we go into normal uh, averaging mode we can do that as well but that is what happens when it averages out that content and then we can of course uh, combine our memory depth so we can do our boxcar averaging our memory depth go right down to a thousand points oh let's be reasonable let's go down to 10k get a decent amount of memory but look at how thin that line is now because we've turned on that boxcar averaging over time to filter out effectively that high frequency content almost exactly like the analog scope does except the analog scope does it using persistence of vision on your phosphor based screen and then of course you have other modes like your peak detect mode which can show uh, which captures those peaks and stores them better than your full memory depth even with a, a record length of a thousand here we can still get it to display all of that high frequency data because it captures it it's got that peak detect mode in the ADC and likewise envelope mode of course you can with infinite persistence you can capture that and it just fills it up fills up the screen like that there's something you can't get on an analog scope but that's real information there over time you'll never see on an analog now there are two types of digital scopes and this will make a difference uh, one is like your Rigol 1000 series scope without what's called an intensity graded display or variable persistence display it goes under all sorts of uh, names like that or analog like display but something like this uh, Tektronix 3000 series does have that and that's what this intensity button over here actually does if we hit that it's at a hundred percent at the moment that's why this waveform looks exactly like it will on a Rigol 
1000 series it's all chunky you know and there's there's no sort of a variable intensity in that at all but if we drop that down you'll notice that the real signal going down going down going down look the real signal the real line in there is actually thinner than that and there's high frequency noise superimposed on top of that which you which you'll see clearly if you have a an oscilloscope like the Rigol 1000 that doesn't have this intensity graded display you'll always see all of that high frequency noise there is no way for the oscilloscope to tell you the difference between ones that are uh, that uh, appear there all the time and just noise that just appears there periodically and that's one of the advantages of the analog oscilloscope of course because it shows you that intensity graded uh, display just like these uh, modern scope modern digital scopes and that's what these modern digital scopes try to do they try to replicate that sort of things so if I show you that waveform with 100% a waveform intensity operates just like that uh, cheap low-end Rigol one or any of those low-end scopes without this intensity graded display look if I turn it down then it operates more like an analog one and you can see I've got one mega sample memory now so it's showing lots of high frequency detail in that waveform but you turn it down you turn it down and you start to see that the true line actually gets thinner and thinner take a look at that because that high frequency information isn't displayed or captured nearly as often and that's why the um, that's why these digital scopes offer this intensity graded display because it tries to simulate the analog scope in that respect but in my opinion they're actually better digital scope is better than analog scope because you can actually pick up that information especially one with these intensity graded displays really fantastic look at that see it's almost all gone and there's the tiny amount the tiny waveform that's the one that's there all the time and the rest of that information is just more uncorrelated noise around that and you'll really see that here because I've added 30 percent noise to this signal so if we turn it right up to a hundred percent there we go look at that right there's a ton of noise that is deliberately added on that waveform because this scope allows me to do that you can see if I turn that intensity right down because that noise is effectively uncorrelated it goes away like that and you can see that the noise is uncorrelated because if I go into my choir mode and choose average down here BAM it disappears so that noise was actually superimposed on that signal now if I turn on the fast acquisition mode which this Tektronix 3000 has I can select different variable intensity display modes now the normal one we uh, had before down here it was showing up below but if I set it to temperature mode here check this out we'll see what it does change the waveform intensity got it set to 100% so it looks just like it would on that uh, you know cheap low-end Rigol without any waveform intensity but we turn it down you'll notice that the waveform changes color and outside there the ones on the outside, like the little hints of blue and green out in there, they're, a, they're a signal anomalies or noise or whatever it is on your signal that is occurring less frequently than that red line in the middle, just like the color temperature gradient in light, uh, for example, same sort of thing. So it's that red part in the middle there, which is your main signal, which is showing up all the time. That's your baseband signal with all the less frequent noise or it could be you know some other part of your signal it's real information there that's ordinarily hidden on an analog scope but shows up here as you know infrequent blue and green data this is really handy very powerful feature of digital scopes and especially this one with that uh, color temperature graded display and it also has an inverted mode here which actually <laughs> does exactly as the name says it actually inverts the waveform so the less frequent stuff the glitchy stuff all that noise shows up brighter than your main waveform so we go up to 100 percent boom it's all there and your main waveform in the middle vanishes that's just a neat little uh, different way to view your data on this MDO 3000 
but that's the same noisy signal, 30% noise added, and can we see it on our analog scope? Well, not really, it's very difficult. Look, it looks like a very clean sine wave, but there's actually, I've added all that noise to it, you can't see it, because it's uncorrelated to the sweep signal, and it's only showing up very briefly there, but we should be able to capture that with the camera. Now, I'll attempt to demonstrate that this analog scope can actually display that high frequency content because it's so short, it doesn't light up the phosphors much and your eyes can't see it. Well, we can try and attempt to capture that by using a long exposure on our camera here. So that's what I've got here. I'll put what they used to use back in the old days as camera hoods. You could buy, that's what these ridges around here were for on these analog scopes. You buy these hoods, you hook your film camera back then up to it and you can get long exposures. Well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to whack some uh, T-shirt over the top like that and uh, I'll turn out the lights here try and get as dark as possible and I'll see if I can capture the noise on a couple of typical signals first a uh, flat line with no input and then a two uh, be the control so there shouldn't be much noise on that and then a one kilohertz analog signal that will have noise on a digital scope but you won't see it on the analog unless we do this and here's what I shot with the camera at different shutter speeds. Now the signal was barely visible. That's 1 20th of a second. And you'll notice that it does get a little bit thicker there. And now it's sort of pretty much stopped. So that is the real signal there. Bit of bloom in. But basically there was a difference between the signal as originally that I could see with the eye and then what we recorded with the camera. It got a little bit thicker. And here's that noisy signal. As you can see, barely visible at the low shutter speed, and that's what it looked like to my eye. But as you increase that shutter speed, you start seeing all that dim phosphor you couldn't see with your eye, and you can now see the noise superimposed on the waveform. Brilliant. So there you go. I hope that's cleared up the myth that digital scopes are noisier than analog scopes, because they're not. They're just better, and they work differently, and hence they're showing up all that high frequency stuff that your analog scope has pretty much been hiding from you all these decades by way of the uh, the phosphor persistence on there and having that uncorrelated noise or signal uh, just not being bright enough. You know, back in the old days when we didn't have digital scopes, you had to uh, uh, turn the brightness right up on this sucker to sort of, you know, see all that, oh, I think there's something hidden in there, is it? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes you might have to get your camera and hook it up to actually saw it. As I uh, demonstrated there, it wasn't a totally thorough uh, demonstration for the camera, but it did at least show the difference that when I've got it low intensity like that, there is actually more information there that my eyes just aren't picking up because they aren't displayed as frequently but the exact same signal on a digital scope, especially one that doesn't have variable persistence, like this Rigo or this ancient uh, Tektronix one, it shows up and that's why the waveform looks thick or noisy. But it's not. Yeah, there might be subtle differences between analog front ends, but it's not like this modern uh, Tektronix 3000 series scope just released is going to have a noisier analog front end than this ancient analog Tektronix scope? No, it's not the case. And there's a little bit involved in terms of the 8-bit digital sampling and things like that. But in the end, what it comes down to is, as I said, the memory depth of the scope. The more memory depth, the more you're going to pick up all that high frequency content. The greater your bandwidth, the more noise you're going to see. And that's inherent in analog uh, scopes as well, not just uh, digital. And of course, your variable intensity displays. If you've got something like the old uh, Rigol or the old Tektronix here that doesn't have variable intensity, well, you're just going to capture everything. And sometimes, as I showed in the previous video, that can be a good thing. So there you go. Don't rag on digital scopes. They're not that bad. They can actually be better. Sorry for all you analog greybeards out there. <laughs> Catch you next time.